so excited to talk to this person live in studio. Star of the new film, Wish I Was Here, Zach Braff. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm doing my own applause. I'll give you some. Thank you. Thank you. We have an audience. Thank you. Yes. Welcome to Chicago. I thank you. I'm glad to be back. I went to school here. I went to Northwestern. Which so did I. Which That's why you're wearing Northwestern yes, purple. Got it. Be. It's all coming together. Yes. I, I saw on your Twitter, I think it was that you, did you have trouble getting here? 27th in line or something? Oh, this is the, tra you know, Sunday night LaGuardia to Chicago is, uh, it, it was pretty backed up. And we finally got on the runway and the, and the pilot said, uh, we're 27th in line, which I've never heard before. I've never heard that either. That <laughs> yeah, doesn't so, sound very promising. So uh, I settled in, but uh, I'm just glad to be here. Good. Well, we're glad to have you here. And this is, of course, like I said, for your new film, Wish I Was Here, which you co-wrote, directed, and star in. What? You made me cry. I was crying. Good. For a lot of the... Good? Is that what you wanted? <laughs> well, what I, my favorite kind of thing. I mean, we did it on Scrubs. We did it... I did it in Garden State. I mean, I, I love... Um... I love to laugh and then get to know the people and get to root for them and like them and then 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 uh, then your heart breaks for them because you're now rooting for them and they've made you laugh and that's my favorite style if you will you know that's like life I mean it's corny to say but you know life we were laughing one minute and crying the next and I, I think if a story is gonna be a really good story about a family which I hope this is uh, sometimes you're laughing sometimes you're crying. Tell, talk a little bit about this story. yeah. For it's about a dad, and a, a family, I should say, and I play a dad who's kind of checked out. He's trying to make his dream come true. He's, his, his wife is the breadwinner. Um, they're barely getting by. The kids are going to a private school that the grandfather's paying for. And when the grandfather can't pay for that anymore, the public school in their neighborhood is really, really bad. And they, the, they make a decision that the dad, my character, is going to try and homeschool his two kids. Mm -hmm. Um, which is where some of the comedy comes in because I'm not That's an I'm not an academic. I'm a bit of a stoner, and <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's not going very well. My kids are way <laughs> smarter than I am, yeah. and so he just essentially decides, like, all right, I can't really teach them the academic stuff. We'll figure that out later because it's only for a semester anyway. But let me get to know my kids better because he's been sort of a checked out dad, mm -hmm. and it's about the time that he spends really getting to know his kids in a way, and and um and teaching them what he does know about life, and um. And the kids are really funny, and Kate Hudson plays my wife, and she's extraordinary, and Manny Patankin plays my father. And it's just a really, really um, strong cast. And whereas Garden State, I would say, was about like a guy falling in love for the first time, this is about a guy um, kind of rem being reminded about the love of his family. Mm -hmm. and, and it's about a family coming together, and it's about... Uh, strong, strong women helping their, you know, helping their families come together. Kate's, Kate's really the the matriarch in charge of this whole family, and she brings it all together. And Josh Gad is in it too. Plays and the, the amazing Josh Gad, brother. who your yeah. listeners will know as Olaf from Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, in the Steve Jobs movie. Yes, yes of course. In there too. So, um, like I said, directed, also co co with your brother. Yes. Now, what was that experience like? Well, you know, my brother's a really great writer, and this 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 movie, amongst other things, was about brothers and about mm -hmm. fathers and sons and and husbands and wives. And I and I thought it was important that we write it together. We're ten years apart, and we have a we can sort of he has two young kids, and so he could help with that aspect of things. And, and and we're both, you know, we wanted it to be also about the search for spirituality in, in 2014. You're sort of, all of us were handed down a religion by our parents. And we both, my brother and I knew a lot of people who were like, yeah, I love that for the culture and the holidays and the, and the traditions of it all. But I don't necessarily respond to all of that. So what is my spirituality? And especially now that I got to pass something on to my kids and, and so that was really helpful that my brother and I could sort of attack it um, 10 years apart, you know, from from my character's 35. Um, so to sort of span that 35 to 45 year old uh, age range. Yeah. And um, this the movie got started in a very sort of unique way with this whole Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. yeah what was that about? Well, you know, when I write these films, I, I, I don't want to compromise them at all. I don't want to change yeah. them. And when I wrote Garden State, uh, no one wanted to pay for it. No one wanted to make it. They yeah. all said, yes, if you do these changes to it. And I really stuck to my guns and, and wasn't going to make it unless I could make it the way I wanted to make it. In that, in that case, I had a sugar daddy show up, a, a, <laughs> a guy who made a lot of money in the mortgage uh -huh. business. And he said, look, I don't know anything about Hollywood, but I like your script. I'll pay for it. Uh -huh. So that guy wasn't around this time, and um, I, 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 of course, had some money of my own to uh, to put into it. But it was the same thing. No one, everyone wanted changes, and they weren't going to. Uh, they were demanding different cast than I wanted, and they were um, wanted to change it from what I, my brother and I had written. Okay. And so um, this was just around the time that crowdfunding had be, had kind of come to the forefront because of a successful Kristen Bell uh, campaign for Veronica Mars. Uh -huh. 
So we thought, well, let's give it a whirl. Well, you know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, we'll offer fans anything and everything they can think of. Actually, it dovetails why we're here in Chicago, because the first and foremost, the main thing was, we'll show you the movie a month early. I'll come to your city and I'll do a Q&A with you where you can ask me anything. We'll talk about anything. Yeah. And it was so huge in Chicago that we had to break it into three separate screenings, which we're doing tonight. We couldn't fit everyone oh, in one cool. auditorium. Yeah. So was, sometimes it's screenings, it's T-shirts, it's advanced copies of the soundtrack. It was kind of like sell merch beforehand. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's interested in that, that pays for the movie. Yeah. And so I'll, along with my own money, obviously. So mm -hmm. um, that's how the film was financed. There was no there was no corporate involvement at all while we were making the movie. No bankers, no anyone. It was just me and my fans. Yeah, great. Oh, I love that. And so the thing with this movie, and I think with a lot of your acting and the stuff you write in general, is just so genuine. All the, the performances seem so genuine. The writing is just so real. Thank you. And That's the highest comment. Thank you. It is. I mean, it feels like there's no script that you're really just watching this family and all of this takes well, place. Well, that's what I try and do is I try and uh, obviously obviously it is written, and but there are moments of improv, of course, but mm -hmm. I, I, that's what I like. You yeah. know, when I make a movie, I'm like, well, what do I want to see? Yeah. What what do I what do I feel like there's not enough of? And 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 obviously, if you if you just really true to yourself, I mean, my career has taught me when I've been successful, when you're really true to yourself and what you like, um, people like it too. You know, Bill Cosby has this quote where he says, if if it's funny to you, it's funny. And it's just so simple. But I always think of that. Like, if it's moving to me yeah. and, and it makes me laugh, not everyone, obviously, but my fan base, people who like what I do, will, will, will also like it. And so that's what I try to do with this film, like I did with Scrubs, like I did with Garden State, is just is just make something that was very true to what moved me, what made me laugh, what made my eyes well, you know, uh -huh. those things. Yeah, it, it, and it sounds weird, but that's a lot of sort of what we learn in radio, too, is just be authentic, just be you, and hopefully people will connect with it. And if not... Yeah. Then, you know. Well, you can't. Here's where, 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 where the pro, where it gets wrong. And I'm sure this is radio too. Yeah. Is where you try and appeal to everyone. Yeah. You can, and then it gets just watered down. And yeah. we see this with studio movies all the time. Is when they don't work. It's often because there were so many cooks in the kitchen trying to make everyone like it. Mm -hmm. And you can't have everyone like it. And it just mm -hmm. becomes like it's like painting with so many different colors. It just becomes brown yeah. or mud. So. Um, what you do is you 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 make it for your fans. You make it for like all right. I'm not. gonna... I hope other people outside my fan base like it, but really what i got to do is be true to the people that like what I do, yeah. and, 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 and hopefully they'll love it. Do you have a certain aspect, directing, the writing, the acting that you like the best, or you just all like it the same? I like directing the best because, for me, I love working with other artists, wow. and, 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 and it's a really cheesy analogy, but um, I like it's the most effective one, and that is the conductor of an orchestra. So I'm... I'm I get to stand there and get the best out of everyone. So if you see the conductor frantically waving for, at the violinist to give up you know, more sound, that's me and my cinematographer. Like I love saying, okay, you're the best cinematographer in L.A. I, my job now is to get you to do your best. Yeah. You know, Kate Hudson, you're an extraordinary uh, movie star. My job is for, to get you to do your best job. And, and I love that. I love pulling the best out of people. And so, uh, okay, I love... All that love the movie. Now let's talk about Northwestern. Like you said, <laughs> okay. you went to Northwestern. That's all you want to talk about. You, you're like, all right, fine. We got that stuff out of the way. Let's talk about Northwestern. No, I want to talk about. So you have probably good memories from Chicago. Yes, no. Yes, I didn't come as often as I wanted to down here because it was so effing cold, and I didn't have a you car. Take that red line. You know, I know, but you had to wait. You had to wait. I forgot the name of the stop, but you had to wait what? out in the freezing cold. Linden, of course, probably. Or no, it's with an H. Uh, Hamlin. I don't know. Uh, All I know is yeah. it was sorry. It's been a lo too long, yeah. but um, it was freezing cold. And uh, but we came down. We came down in party buses, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we were those obnoxious drunk college kids that you people listening probably were annoyed by. All the whole neighborhood I know did not like uh, a lot of my friends. Who yeah, friends. we were loud. Um, but I loved it, and I loved Evanston. I mean, that was such a beautiful place to go to school on the lake. And Isn't and it nice? uh, it's funny though. I, my dad and I laugh that they give you the tour in the spring. I know, and they trick you. <laughs> they give you the tour yes. in the spring. You're like, oh, my God, it's utopia. Oh, yes. They don't give you the tour in December. No. I remember many <laughs> moments taking a cab from North Campus to South Campus just because it was too cold. I don't know if you ever did yeah, that, but yeah, I yeah, refused yeah, to totally walk. Totally did. So, um, and also, too, I saw you tweet about Game of Thrones last night. Oh, my God, so good. Was it great? I don't see. I'm not. I, I'm only into like the fifth episode of the first season. I'm just getting into. Listen, it I've now. never been into fantasy stuff in my life. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean that so that sort of fantasy, you know, knights and yeah. and uh, and dragons. And I just think it is so entertaining. It is uh, extraordinarily acted. It's got to be the most expensive show on TV because yeah. they shoot. It's 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 just gorgeous to look at. 
Uh, it's sexy. The acting is amazing. The writing's amazing. I just find it so entertaining. I know a lot of people say, I mean, they said, well, everyone sleeps with everyone. And everyone kills one another. So you can't trust anyone. And I'm but like, isn't well, just, I gotta get but, into but it. But also, like, if you love acting, it's just great acting. The actors, yeah. the, 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 the acting on it is 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 wonderful. And the writing is wonderful. It's, it's a lot of talent. Put it this way. I'm 39 years old. It's the first show in that genre I've been into. I've never seen a Lord of the Rings. I've never seen a Harry Potter um, me neither. But this 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 <laughs> show just got me. Good. I downloaded a family tree. For people who are going like, oh, there's too many characters, I literally downloaded a family tree. I heard about this, that that's what you should do. I put it on my iPhone, and when I when I was confused, I literally paused the show and be like, hold on a second. And like <laughs> would zoom in and out and be like, oh, that's her cousin. Got it. And then put Beth I heard that's the way you should do That's the way it. I recommend yeah. for all of you newbies to get into. <laughs> are you following the World Cup at all? Or not really? No, I, sports don't interest me at all. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, America. No. I'm sorry, America. I don't like sports. <laughs> that's okay. It feels so un-American. No, that's I'm not. When really I went to Northwestern, TV. Darnell yeah. Autry was the was the um, oh. football player. We yeah. had one good football player. Yeah. And if you went to the game, all you heard all all over and over again was Darnell Autry the the ball carrier. <laughs> Darnell Autry the ball carrier. Hey. And that's what happened. And we like we like went to like the the Rose Bowl or something because yeah. Darnell Autry was the ball carrier. <laughs> yeah. But at least you went to games. That's good. Yeah, I was just hammered. I, 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 yeah. I, I, in college, you can get drunk in the parking lot, and then it becomes more interesting. I went to all the games, too, but I was there watching all my hot, you know, crushes play on the field. So. Oh, well, I was there um, getting drunk with people in the parking lot and hearing <laughs> Darnell Autry, the ball carrier. <laughs> 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 so you know a lot of reunions are happening you have i just saw hey dude the cast of hey dude reunited is scrubs ever going to do a reunion of any sort um no i think that more more likely than that is that donald Faison and i will do uh something else together whether ah, it's a movie or a tv or show or something he has a cameo mm -hmm. in uh in his uh sorry he has a cameo in my film and he's actually such a, a sweetheart that he's flying in from LA to come to these uh, Chicago screenings tonight solely to support me and see the fans and be an awesome friend. Um, even though he's got only in one scene in the movie, but that's what kind of guy he is. And um, so we're best friends in real life. And I, I'm, I have a feeling um, we'll be doing something soon together, whether it's a film or another show, because uh, we just have too much fun. Can't wait for that. Yeah, you have a fun scene in the movie. What are you driving around in the movie? Uh, we're driving an Aston, Aston Martin yeah. DB9 Volante, which is uh, uh, just the nastiest car on earth. Um, and um, and yeah. my character can't afford it, but Donald's character plays a, a, a dealer at the Aston Martin dealership. Yeah. And I lie my way into test driving it, and, and uh, wackiness ensues. It does. <laughs> very funny. Very funny. So uh, also to Broadway, by the way, too. Jessica Alba just gave you some pretty high praise. It's yeah, she's show. she's a sweetheart. You know, it's fun when you're on, when you're on, a, when you're on a, a Broadway show that's a hit. Everyone, you get to meet all these fun, fancy people. They all come check it out. We have uh, a lot of cool celebs come by and see the show. I mean, I know Jessica from beforehand, uh -huh. but it's 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 always cool. One of the one of the one of the extra perks of being on Broadway is that uh, you, all these fun people come see it and you get to hang out with them after. Anyone else come by that was like, wow, cool? Um, well, you know, Chris Martin came by, Taylor Swift came by. Oh. Um, um, lots of really cool actors that I love have come by. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's fun. It's like you're doing you're throwing a party every single night and you never you know who's going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> It is so great to meet Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Anything else you want to add, say? No, come check out my movie. You know, it's open yeah. in only in certain cities on July 18th, and Chicago is one of them. So please put it in your, your calendar. Come check us out. Definitely go see a good movie. You might cry a little bit. You might cry a little. And, but man, it's okay. You can hide your tears. It's weird because I'm in a room. You know, you're in a room because I saw the screening with critics and, like, other pe you know, people who are watching. And it's, like, always so awkward. Like, you're like... You don't want to see, like, you don't want to see your crowd. I know, it's funny. Like, and men are so funny because women just let yeah. it happen because, like, they're in touch with their emotions. Yeah. But my, I always laugh at men who, like, have to, like, oh, I have an itch on my inner right. nose. Let me get why that. is my, why is my inner <laughs> nose itching? <laughs> I know. It's funny because I, you know, you know, it's just such a funny societal thing that men have to like pretend that uh, that, that something else is happening near their face. Yeah, <laughs> I saw it. I saw it happen. You know, the uh, guy who itches his face with his shirt oh, yeah. and my, all that. My, like, my, all right. my inner eye is so itchy. I know. I know. Well, my fellow Wildcat, Zach Braff, great to meet Wildcat you. Wildcat Growl, thank yes. you. Yes. <laughs> Wish I was here. July 18th. Go see it.